A fantastic and very common place to start for calculus derivative rules is with the power rule, where you can take the derivative of anything with an exponent. Here we're going to start with easy examples that are only polynomials, so positive whole number exponents. Problem one is the derivative of 3x squared. For the power rule, you just leave any number out front alone, and you bring down the exponent. So the 2 came down out front, and you have to always subtract 1 from the exponent. So that exponent of 2 becomes a 1. Our final answer is 6x. We're going to do 10 total examples here, so gradually by the end it should get more and more comfortable. Okay, so for problem two, we're taking the derivative of negative 2x. And remember that a plain old x is the same thing as x to the power of positive 1. So the negative 2 out front gets multiplied by the exponent, which is just a 1, so the negative 2 doesn't change. And then you subtract 1 from the exponent, so you get x to the 1 minus 1, which is just x to the 0 power. And x to the 0 power is just the number 1, so you end up with negative 2 times 1 or just negative 2. Really, we're taking the derivative of the line y equals negative 2x, so a line with negative 2 slope. If you take the derivative, that's the same thing as finding the slope. So the derivative of negative 2x is just the number negative 2, because the slope of y equals negative 2x is negative 2. Okay, for problem number three, the derivative of 5x to the 11. The 5 stays out front because it's the number out front. The 11 in the exponent comes down to join the 5 with multiplication, and you get 55 out front. The exponent is 11 minus 1. You have to subtract 1 from the exponent for the power rule. So you end up with 55x to the 10th power. On to problem number four, let's do d dx, which is the same thing as taking the derivative of, d dx of negative x squared. So the negative out front is the same thing as a negative one. The two that was the exponent has to come down out front to join the negative one. That becomes a negative two out front, and you have to subtract one from the exponent, so your two becomes a one. Your final answer is negative two x. Problem number five, let's take the derivative of 4x cubed, or 4x to the third power. So that 4 is out front, it has to go along for the ride. The 3 that was the positive exponent has to come down and join the 4 as a number out front, and you subtract 1 from the exponent. 3 minus 1 is your new exponent. So the 4 times 3 becomes the 12 out front, and you have 12x squared, 12x to the 2 power. One of the nicest properties about derivatives is that if you have more than one term, so if you have a plus or a minus sign in the middle and more than one term, you can just take the derivative of each term separately. So in problem six, we'll take the derivative of 6x plus x squared. The 6x part of it, you take the derivative just like in problem two. And for the x squared part of it, you bring the two from the exponent 2 down out front and subtract 1 from the exponent. So for the 6x part of it, you end up with 6x to the 0. And for the x squared part, you end up with 2x to the 1 power. x to the 0 is just 1, or you don't even have to write 1. And x to the 1 is just a plain old x. Okay, problem seven, let's take the derivative of five x to the fourth. So the five has to go along for the ride, it's just a number sitting out front. You bring the four from the exponent down to be multiplied with the five, and you subtract one from the exponent, so the four becomes a three. Twenty x cubed is your final answer. So for problem eight, Let's take the derivative of another linear function, negative 3x. Do you remember how to do this one? There are two ways to think about it. You can either remember that for any linear problem, negative 3 times x, 
only the number out front is going to survive because that is the slope of your linear equation. Another way to think about it is algebraically step by step. X without any exponent written is just like X to the 1. You bring down that 1 to multiply with the negative 3, which does not change the negative 3, and you subtract 1 from the exponent, and you get 1 minus 1 for your new exponent, which is 0. So your final answer is negative 3 times X to the 0, which is the same thing as negative 3. Problem 9, let's take the derivative of 17x squared. So the 17 is just a number hanging out front, and the 2 from the exponent is going to come down to join at 17 times 2, x to the 2 minus 1, which is the same thing as just a plain old x. 34x is your final answer. And last but not least, problem 10, let's take the derivative of 10x to the 10th power. See if you can pause this video and do it on your own. All right, so the 10 stays out front and you bring down the 10 from the exponent. So you get 10 times 10, x to the 9th power because 10 minus 1 is 9. Your final answer is 100x to the 9th. Awesome job. I hope you're really pumped that you know how to do the power rule for polynomials now. And just stay tuned for the power rule for more general functions because it gets even more exciting.